What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another video. Uh, a twofer for, for this week, honestly. Uh, we kicked it off with the Studio 66 spoiler review, but today we're talking about one of our favorite conventions to attend. In our eyes, the Comic-Con of horror and haunt conventions. That is Midsummer Screen returning for the 2022 summer to get us pumped up before haunt season. And the reason why I call this the Comic-Con of, of horror and haunt conventions is because this is like all the big haunts come together, announce their stuff, all the big names in horror come together, um, uh, companies that sell like horror-related items such as like Trick or Treat Studios and all that, they all come and they'll debut new stuff. So this is like a really big deal for Sammy and I and for a lot of the horror and haunt community too. Um, but we have a lot to break down. We were given a press email and we were uh, shown exactly what we, we can expect this year and what we uh, are already looking excited for. So um, Sammy took a lot of notes for us. So Sammy, why don't you kick it off with us of uh, what can we expect at some of the things we can expect at Midsummer Scream 2022? Yes, it would be my honor. It's a, it is refreshing to be back here with you all to discuss Midsummer. It's going to be the five-year anniversary this year. As we did not get a Midsummer Scream in 2021. Thank you, COVID. However, they were generous enough to organize Awaken the Spirits, which was like a yes. mini version of Midsummer Scream, and it still gave yeah. us the same vibes, which we had a blast at. Yeah, and obviously we didn't get one in 2020 as well. So this has been a long time coming. Both Tony and I need to get our fix of uh midsummer um and i think the thing that both tony and i probably look forward to the well there's a lot of things we look forward to one of the top things on both of our lists is the hall of shadows coming back again um and you can expect uh, many different people but um announced thus far will be cal haunts fear farm reichland asylum temecula tear and corona haunt what do you what are you thinking here tony i mean listen I've said it before and I say it again. The home haunt industry are not home haunts. A lot of the ones we've went to, this is, these are professional haunts right here. These guys work tirelessly to put on these haunts every single year. A lot of them out of their house. A lot of them are actually moving up and getting spaces. And it, it is just, we are blown away every single year. So I'm excited. I love the Hall of Shadows. This is literally our pre-haunt uh, fix before haunt season starts. This is literally all the home haunts coming together, giving us a preview of what they're going to be showcasing, maybe some stuff that are returning from the past that a lot of the fans loved. Um, so I'm excited to see what a lot of these people uh, come up with. Usually the Hall of Shadows usually features about, honestly, anywhere from 15 to 25 walkthroughs, depending on spacing and whatnot. Um, but every year we've gone to the Hall of Shadows, we've loved what these um, home haunts have put on, and I'm excited to see what, what we have in store for 2022 as well as I know you are too. Um, I know, unfortunately you don't get to visit a lot of them, but um, for myself, it's something to do after all the major haunts opened and it starts becoming the, towards the end of October, we start hitting up a lot of these home haunts and they put on fantastic shows. Yeah. It's one of my favorite things to do is watch uh, the, as many walkthroughs as I can of these home haunts on, on YouTube. Um, I know like, you know, watching Pirate's Cave or Temecula Terror, even Corona Haunt, you know, some of the things we've already been to. Um, and I'm really excited this year because in 2019, last time we were there, um, I didn't get to go. I didn't get the opportunity to go through as many of the Hall of Shadows walkthroughs as I had wanted to. Um, so it's going to be our first tip of the video. Get the gold bat. We'll discuss ticketing later, but get the gold bat because that's the only way you're going to be able to do as much as you want. And um, as we keep going through this, there's going to be a lot to go through. Um, and we'll do a tips and tricks video later down the line as we get closer. But get the goal back because there's a lot of great panels, obviously the Hall of Shadows, um, that we're going to be able to cover. And speaking of panels, um, actually, no, let, let's before we get to panels, I do want to uh, highlight another thing that's going to be in the Hall of Shadows this year is the Decade Brigade is back with a new show coming uh 2022 um to midsummer scream which is super epic because i know in 2019 both tony and i really enjoyed it yeah um uh you know it, it sucks that your legs kind of you know hurt because you have to sit on the floor for a good while to get right. a good spot but hey that show is killer um and i know both tony and i have fallen in love with sliding i will never slide but tony may one day i do uh, but that's a We've talked about this Maybe. many times, but, it, you know, never say never. It's, you have a higher chance than I do. Let's never just say, say never. That. I'll say that. Never say never. But, yes, the Cade Brigade is back 
Um, and then just moving on to some, some more things here is uh, the original Monster Kids and Family is coming. Um, so that's going to be the children and family of Boris Karloff, uh, Bella Luigi, uh, Lugosi. Oh, I don't know why I said Luigi. Luigi. <laughs> yeah, Bella yeah, Luigi. Lugosi. They were promoting a new uh, Luigi's Mansion game. So Yeah, yeah Bella Lugosi, <laughs> Lon Chaney Jr. and Sr. and Vincent Price. That's going to be super sick. Um, Legacy I mean, right as, there, man. Yeah, Legacy is monster fans. We're excited to hear some stories and, and really just get some more insight. Um, and then now moving on to the panels, there's tons and tons of panels throughout the weekend. Um, and, and, you know, what's been announced as far as Winchester Mystery House we put in on a panel? LA Haunted Hayride, which is a, a favorite of both Tony and, and mine. Right. Um, and then another super one that we're excited for is Composers of the Apocalypse, um, which is going to be, um, you know, different horror composers. Um, they haven't announced who that's going to be just yet. And they did say there might be a performance or two in there. So it's something we're going to want to check out. What are you thinking, Tony? I mean, you know, and, and this is a no-brainer. And you and I are both big fans of music in general, um, especially when it comes to scores and films. Me and you geek out over that stuff all the time. So this is something we definitely have to attend. Um, the endless possibilities of who could show up at this panel are just my head's going everywhere to see who might show up and who who might actually do performances is really cool. Um, and this is something new for Midsummer Scream, and I'm glad they're taking that route of not only recognizing the people and the you know directors of film, but also recognizing the you know the composers who make some of the most iconic songs for these films that you remember more than the actual quotes of the films. Because you know a lot of these you know songs and stuff that we play every single Halloween, um, it, it's something that is just in our head, and and there's a lot of iconic horror uh, scores out there. So I'm excited to see what this one has to offer, and I'm hoping. Um, I'm hoping to see uh, hopefully some big names, but if not, I, I think I'll still be impressed with it because, you know, you and I are both music geeks and I think it'll be a fun time for you and I. Yeah. Speaking of another thing that looks super fun, it's going to be the museum of Halloween, which is going to be just a, a, a full homage to the original classic Halloween. Um, I know it's something that a lot of people in the horror community love. So I, I'm really excited to see what this is going to entail. It'll be the first year Midsummer's putting this on. So I'm excited to see what that will include. Any uh, any thoughts on that? Yeah, it's something new for Midsummer Scream. It's honoring the legacy of Halloween, uh, something that we love. A lot of uh, fans in the haunt and horror community love old school traditional Halloween. So this will be really cool to see what we see in there. And I'm, I'm excited to actually hopefully uh, get in there, film some stuff for you guys so you guys can get a complete walkthrough. That's something that I, I know we'll probably plan on on filming one of the nights. Um, so I'm excited to see what they have to offer, and I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. All right, awesome. And then another thing we love here uh, at the Nights of Horror is the vendors, um, especially like it, like a lot of these vendors, um, you know, haven't had as many opportunities over these last two years, thanks to our good old friend Kovey. Um, so uh, Midsummer is going to be bringing over 350 vendors together. Oof. We're going to have a huge floor. Yeah, I'm going to probably be tired walking halfway through, and there's going to be another half to go through. So make sure you're going to spread some love there. Um, some of the vendors that have already been announced is the Mystic Museum, Tino Evil, Vamp and the Fiends, Trick or Treat Studios, which have Fantastic Max, yep. Backstitch Bruja, Discount Cemetery, Nocturnal Designs, and last but certainly not least, a mortal mass. Oof, a mortal mass. Beautiful mask. Uh, yeah, um, you know what? And we always preach this on Nights of Horror. Um, a lot of these uh, vendors, too, are small businesses. Um, a lot of them usually only rely on stuff like this for income. Um, so we always support. Go, go and support your small businesses, uh, especially businesses that are selling Halloween goodies uh, because a lot of these people are very creative. A lot of these people put a lot of time and effort to create such things for these shows. And a lot of the work, not even a lot, all the work that they create are fantastic. It is very um, decorative. And uh, depending on what you like and what you don't like, I mean, there's something, honestly, I could say this right now, there's something for everyone. Um, so definitely go support the small businesses. And obviously you want to look good for haunt season. So go pick up some stuff so you can rock during the haunt season, man. Yeah, definitely go pick up some stuff for the home, pick stuff up to you know, rock during season hot two, season. Decorations, you know, get all yeah. that good stuff there at Midsummer Scream. I guarantee you there's going to be something that you want. Trust me. Yeah, definitely. Um, and another thing that's super awesome that Midsummer Scream definitely brings to the table every year is celebrity meet and greets. Um, and obviously their full lineup has not been announced, but thus far we've got Jude Courtney, who's Michael Myers in the current uh, trilogy. 
Uh, we have Jeff Daniel Phillips and Daniel Roebuck, who's going to be in Rob Zombie's Monsters. Yeah. Not sure when that comes out, but that's going to be super cool. They're also just uh, uh, regular Rob Zombie alumni. So if you've seen any Rob Zombie film in the past, you've probably seen them in them. Yeah. Um, also, we got Eileen Dietz, who's Pazuzu's face from The Exorcist. Uh, Christine McConnell, who's got a great show on Netflix about baking. Um, I know the one, <laughs> this is the one that Tony's probably most excited for thus far, is a... Uh, um, you know, some famous kill count guy. His name's Deadbeat James. Oh, man. We've met Deadbeat James twice, and he's one of the nicest people ever, and I, I stand by that. I love his channel. He's one of the inspirations for this channel. So, Deadbeat, you the man. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, and then last but certainly not least, we got Grim Life Coll uh, Collective. Another great showing channel. Showing up. Another great channel. Um, also on here, we got a few more different things that they offer. Every year, they got that Black Cat Lounge. You get to go lounge out with some cats, you know, really support um, the, the, I believe it's for like cats and shelters and stuff like right. that. So, um, you know, helping fundraise for that, um, for bringing the kitties, kiddos along, since this is a family friendly event, um, maybe don't take them in the hall of shadows. Cause that might be a little scary for them, but you know, where you can take them is paranormal pixies, pumpkin patch children. So, which is a, you know, a great opportunity, you know, bring the kids and have a, let them have some fun as you go through the show, uh, the show floor, um, and different go to panels. Um, also, every year we got that Screaming Room Film Festival presented by Horbuzz, which is a great opportunity to show, you know, up and coming um, filmmakers. Um, and they, they have a competition every year, which is super awesome. Um, and then as well, um, for those people that are just looking to learn more about putting on either their own home haunt or what goes into the uh, the entire process, we got educational courses by TEA at USC and TEA at UCLA. Um, and that's just what they've announced thus far. I know that there was a lot of information, but we're about to overblow you with some more. Mm -hmm. Tony, go over those tickets. Ticket prices, man. So you, uh, obviously this year too, something we should bring up uh, involving ticket prices. This is the first year Midsummer Scream is doing three days. Um, they're doing Friday, which is considered their preview night, and Saturday and Sunday where you're going to get all the panels, um, everything available to go. Uh, so uh, Friday is mostly just for the vendors, so you can shop around, kind of get a feel for the thing. Hall of Shadows will not be open Fridays or uh, that Friday um, just because they want to keep it a surprise for Saturday. They want to focus Friday just for the vendors. Um, so I highly suggest that you check out the preview night um, because, you know, that's going to be your one stop uh, to shop uh, and really pay attention to a lot of the vendors because once Saturday and Sunday come, your weekend's going to be blown up with panels, going to Hall of Shadows. So definitely we highly suggest check out that Friday specifically so you can pay more attention to the vendors as to what they're selling, what they're offering, and whatnot. But here we go. So we got um, regular general admission tickets right here. So you can go uh, single days, which is Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays. And so Friday runs for $32, um, of course, plus you know there's going to be some fees and whatnot. Uh, Saturday general admission runs for $47, and the reason why that one's going to be the, your probably most priciest is because that's going to be the most popular and busiest day of the convention, and it usually goes for any convention that you go to, any event that you go to. Usually, if it's on a Saturday, Saturday is going to be the most uh, priciest and the most packed. Um, and then Sunday is uh, $37 with fees, um, which honestly, in my opinion, if you're planning on going just one day, um, it's worth the pricing. Um, it, it's a very fun, like Sammy said, it's a very fun and family oriented event. Uh, so you can bring your kids, you can bring, you know, little ones and stuff and you guys, there's fun for everyone. There really is. Um, and then you got the weekend general mission. If you want to go all three days and have the full midsummer spring, um, you know, experience for all three days, $63 plus fees, which I think is a really, really good deal, um, for all three days. It's, if you really look at the ticket pricing for single days and then that one, it really is worth the extra money to fork out. Um, the one that Sammy was talking about earlier, which is the gold bat, is the one that we highly suggest that everyone gets. This is going to get you uh, not only uh, in for the convention all three days, but you're going to get priority uh, lines for uh, entrance into the convention, entrance into panels, and entrance into the Hall of Shadows, um, which is just uh, honestly, trust us when we say this, is well worth the money. The panels will get packed. Hall of Shadows does get packed. And, of course, when you get there in the morning, there's a very long line, and trust me, you get to get in an hour early with the gold bat. It is very much, very much worth the money. Uh, so highly suggest that one. That goes for $135 plus fees for the entire weekend on top of getting all that. Um, so it's cool. You get a cool little laminate. You get a nice little um, uh, a lanyard as well for Midsummer Scream. They're very big on their lanyards and their, and their laminates. That's, that's one of the reasons why I love going to these conventions because I like getting the badges and stuff. Um, they're, they're cool little collector's items too. So, uh, 
highly suggest, though, out of all those ticket packages that you opt out and get the gold bat, though. It's going to be worth your while, especially with the busy weekend they have. And when more stuff gets announced as far as uh, panels go, uh, what haunts might be there, what other panels might be announced, what other guests might be announced, um, what other home haunts might be announced, what other vendors and whatnot. Um, it's going to be a, a busy weekend, but I guarantee you it's going to be a fun weekend. Um, so, yeah, yeah. From there, though, what do you think? Should we talk about some stuff that you can look forward from us and what we're excited about or where you want to go from here? Yeah, we can definitely go there. Um, but before we go there, um, definitely get those tickets now because uh, they probably will sell out. Let's yeah. be honest, um, because those gold bat tickets are like gold. Um, so tickets are on sale now at midsummerscream.org. We'll go ahead and drop that link below for your viewing pleasure now, here's a question are they going to be now this is something important because i know t people bought tickets and did they offer refunds for the 2020 or are they um, honoring those tickets still great question so they did offer refunds if you had requested them if you opted not to request that refund those tickets will be valid for 2022 so if you bought midsummer scream 2020 tickets those will be honored and valid for 2022 that's if you kept them and didn't get the refund if you still have your ticket from 2020 they're going to be honored for 2022 so correct um correct. but what can you expect from nights of horror at an event like midsummer scream well usually this is where we are the busiest we are panel hopping we are home haunt hopping we are walking the floor we are meeting up with friends we are meeting up with um other people and it's going to be a very busy weekend from us. So expect uh, a lot of panels that we'll be posting up on our channel. Expect a lot of walkthroughs from um, the Hall of Shadows uh, to promote uh, other home haunts and independent haunts that are going to be coming later on in the season. Expect a full walkthrough of the show floor to showcase all the um, vendors and whatnot and uh, hopefully get to promote a lot of their stuff. So if you don't get an opportunity to either go to the event or if you miss their table, you can always go on their Instagrams or whatever websites they have set up and you can go buy from them later. Um, and, you know, we're, there's probably going to be a lot of friends that we're going to meet up with there. So you'll see them pop in and out of videos and whatnot. Um, it's always a busy weekend for us, but it doesn't even feel like work or, or being busy. We're, we're having a good time because, yeah, we may be filming. We may be running around everywhere, but we're having a good time doing it. We're hanging out with our friends. We're laughing. You know, we're reacting to what news are, is being announced and, you know, meeting new people, meeting a lot of celebrities, going through the, the Hall of Shadows. It's, it's always a fun time for us. It's never we've never once considered Nights of Horror work. It's always it's just a hobby for us. It's fun. We have fun doing this and. I could I could speak for myself and potentially Sammy that when saying Midsummer Scream is is one event that we look forward to every single year. Like we've already been talking about it many times and we're very excited. Yeah, uh, I definitely looking forward to it. Got the time off work, check. Um, and you know what else you can be doing is uh, hit that like button so you let us know you like this content as well as subscribe so that way when we drop the content because we're gonna know. drop that content as quickly as we can. Yeah. Um, sorry, Tony. He already knows that it's gonna hey, suck. Man, I've, you know, now I'm working days. It doesn't even bother me now. You know, I could just yeah. I can I can work it during the day and I'll be all right. So. Yeah. So we're going to be dropping that content as quickly as possible. And in real time, we'll be vlogging as well as check out our Instagram at the Knights of horror. Cause we will be posting on there as well. Yeah. You know, trying to film as many little clips as we can taking photos. I'm really just trying to keep you guys updated and as live and in tune, because maybe you don't have the opportunity to view it in person, get out there to midsummer scream. Um, it is going to be at the long beach convention center. I don't believe we've said the dates just yet, but that is going to be July 29th through the 31st. I'm super stoked. Um, like I said, really excited to see the Hall of Shadows, really get to experience those beautiful, beautiful, beautiful displays, um, as well as just to, to, to see what everything, um, you know, comes about of this. LA Haunted Hayride always has a great presentation. Usually you're going to get something from Universal, something from Knott's. Um, and then just the commodity, just being back with, um, with our friends and the whole uh, horror industry is fantastic. Um, I know we had a great time at uh, Waking the Spirits um, and, you know, being able to see everyone. So I can only imagine how much more of a party it's going to be July 29th to the 31st at Midsummer Scream 2022. I'm looking forward to it, man. It should be a great time. Uh, the fans, I know for sure, are going to have a great time. Midsummer Scream, in my opinion, never disappoints. Um, they always put on one of the greatest fucking conventions I've ever been to. And uh, I, I just look forward to being in that environment and being around um, our people. 
we feel we feel at home when we're at these type of at the, these, these type of events. So I'm a little um, I'm a little a little excited. I think the only sad part for me is having to look across the shore at the Queen Mary, knowing we probably won't get that event this year. But you know, but the Queen is coming back strong. You know, she's you, coming you gotta back. Give her, you got to give her a nice bow though when you're in front of her out of respect. You know, because that is the Queen, man, and and she lives on. Trust me. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. But as we get more news from Midsummer Scream, we will be announcing it on the channel. So stay tuned for that. Like we said, drop a like on here, subscribe. And as we get more information, we'll continue to make these videos and update you. Uh, but if nothing else, we hope you have a fantastic day and we'll see y'all in the next video. Peace. Deuces.